three of them even today. And we trust that God will really minister to you. Praise the Lord. The first barrier that I want us to consider is that of multi-vision. Somebody say multi. And of course, depending on the school you went to, you say multi and multi. Amen. Bangwale, please remind us, I need to pray for Ntatu and release her. She's moving to Cape Town. Please remind me, Bangwale. Amen. Um, and it's so sad, but we love you, Ntatu. Please remind me, Bangwale. Somebody say multi. Vision. One man once reflected and stated the following. That if you want to kill a man's vision you simply have to give him another one. Even the word division means basically another vision. So in, in a place where there's a multiplicity of visions, there's bound to be die vision. Visions die when there's many visions. In an organization, we need to appreciate the fact that in as much as we all have a purpose, we can't all have a vision. We, we, not, we need to fall in line with what God is doing in the house. But, 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 but I think it, it also has to apply in our own lives, own lives. Many of us can't tap into more because we are generalists. And that is to say, we are a master of none, or rather, a what? What do they call it? The jack of all trades and a master of none. Or maybe let me speak to the young lions. Nintana no Some of you, your marital destiny will come the day you say, I choose this one and I'm going to build with this one. But as long as you have options, there won't be much growth. <clears throat> one of the biggest challenges that we are facing as black men is that we are distracted. We are distracted. There's an acute lack of focus. And, and, and let me even be somewhat inclusive and, and speak to all of us as a company of believers, <clears throat> particularly even to the married people. You don't leave a marriage because there's no excitement. Okay. You don't leave a marriage because someone's Instagram marriage looks better than yours. Hey, because, man, some people's highlights are real. Man. You're like, whoa, what a marriage. <laughs> Can I connect to that grace? And, and here's a thought. Don't let go of what's healthy in pursuit of what is seemingly perfect. But well, let me say this. Nothing is more important than peace. You know, it's, it's quite, you know, like when you realize, like, I was thinking about it. You know you are really growing. Like, as a, not even the Lord, just as a human being. When you value peace above pleasure. Like, when you're in your 20s, you want to be in Brahm, eh? <laughs> like, the sound just does something. Like, wow, man, what a, what a blessing. But over time, you want just quite quiet. You know, like even now as I was preaching, there's a debit order that hit Manuel. <laughs> it affected my peace. Do you understand why old people are always saying, come on, bring down the volume. <laughs> there's a need for peace, Manuel. And, and, and here is the thing. Some of us, it's not that we need to create peace. It's that we must not tamper with it. Let, let me say that again. It's not just about the creation of peace. 
It's also about ensuring that you don't tamper with your peace. Hey, it's not the most exciting time in your home. But there's, there's peace. Bring a third party. They want to spice it up. No, 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 no. You, you are chasing peace. You, you are chasing... Some of, some, some of us have great marriages. And, and maybe we don't understand because we underestimate what God can do over a prolonged period of time. There's an interesting stat that was released that if a marriage survives the first five years, it's most likely to succeed. So, so to that person who is five years, it's been dealing with you, there's hope. Amen. <laughs> Hang in there. But, but here's the thing. Over a prolonged period of time, you might even find that out of something that is meant to be bitter herbs, over time, there is peace. There is a blessing. Let, let, let me say this, Manuel. The enemy is distracting us as a generation of people in this sense. The Bible says he who finds a wife, finds a good thing and receives what? Can all the favors just wave in the Lord? Hallelujah. People are pursuing side chicks. Living favor at home. Illicit sex. No, no, no. It's, you, are, you, are not, you, you are pursuing pleasure over peace. The Bible talks about a Proverbs 31 woman. Proverbs 31 woman. We love it. Women's month, it's all about her. Considers the fields and buys it. She does not eat the bread of idleness. His heart trusts her. She does him good all the days of her life. Can some young lovers receive this Proverbs 31? She's there. She's there. I know it looks like she's a fictional figure, but she's a person. Yeah. <laughs> but, the, but the point is this. Instead of investing in mining this favor, you have multi-vision. You are pursuing something else instead of mining what you have at home. The more, the more will require of us to become focused. Focused. Be focused on your marriage. Be focused on your business. Be focused on raising your kids. Be focused in being part of a local church. Be focused in your profession. You know one of the biggest challenges we have today is the dimension of slasher. Somebody say slasher. Slasher author, slasher CEO, slasher speaker, slasher podcast host, podcast host, slasher YouTube, slasher philanthropist, slasher church founder, slasher, slasher. When, when, when do you get time to build? Paul says, this one thing I do, this one thing, one thing, this one person I do. <laughs> Only one thing is needful. There, there's a necessity for essentialism, Banuel. Well, what is essential? We, you know, we speak around multiple streams of income. But let's also ask ourselves this question. What, what about the core stream? What about the core stream? If, for instance, your 9 to 5 pays your bills, please respect it. I know you have a podcast to host. <laughs> I'm, here in a pod I'm just saying, your core, your core, What's your core? What is the one thing that if it's removed right now, it affects your mental health? Okay. Maybe you need a scripture so that you know what I'm talking about. 
Proverbs chapter 11. Oh man, I forgot to take 12 verse 11. Proverbs chapter 12 verse 11. Proverbs chapter 12 verse 11. Proverbs chapter 12 verse 11. Those who work their land will have what? But those who chase fantasies have no sense. There are some of us who are chasing fantasies. And we don't have time to build. The, the building of generational wealth will require you to focus on something. You know, for instance, some of us, I feel like we are modeling around the right people, but wrongly. For instance, Bishop T.D. Jakes, right? Bishop T.D. Jakes is a movie producer. But that's not why you know him. Why do you know him? He's a preacher. What's your real thing? I, I, look, there's something that we need to build as a core that over time allows us to pursue the podcast. To pursue the foundation. You see another fantasy, you are failing. Right now, you have come here. You are appealing your exclusion. But you're about to enter into a relationship. Multivision. I, I think I might be prophesying. Yes, no, but I, I think I'm talking. It's like as if, you know, but actually. But Tuesday, Uba back. No, focus. Focus. But well, at times balance means that I'll focus on this in this season. You don't have to do a lot. For, for some of us, more means doing less. You're doing too much. Second Kings chapter chapter four. Second Kings chapter four. Second Kings chapter 4, we'll start reading from verse 4. Let's go to verse 3. Elisha said, go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. The next verse. Then go inside and shut the door. Shut the door. You know what shutting the door means? Eliminate options. Are you married? Just a little bit. Why, why are you? <clears throat> why are you married just a little bit? Yeah, I'm married, but it's not that serious. Hey! It's not that serious. It's not that serious. Hey, I wish I had met you earlier. Ha! Huh? Met who? <laughs> met you earlier. The devil and his mother-in-law are liars. Yeah. Go home. Build your home. Have an approach of essentialism. What is essential? What is important? What is paying the bills? Don't chase fantasies. You are living a good woman at home chasing fantasies. Of course she'll treat you better than your wife because your wife knows you a bit more. <laughs> so I'm, gonna, I'm hiding from the guys right now. Can they see me? Oh, okay. Number two, I think it was a bit rough. I promise you, it gets a bit better. Amen. Yeah. 
The second barrier is stinginess. Somebody say stinginess. You know there's a tribe in South Africa that is known for being stingy. Don't worry, I won't reveal. I won't say who this tribe is. But it starts with a... <laughs> no, let's not mention them when we're in the house of the Lord. <laughs> Apparently, if you visit them, ah, they're not eating, Bob. <laughs> they, they'll wait for you to go. <laughs> but anyway, why am I folding now? Amen. And, and announce that I'm coming. Even if it's for breakfast, just bread. No, no, no. They're not taking it out. But, but for many of us, ladies and gentlemen, that's how we are in the things of the Lord. This one, I need to give props to Ndaba. Ndaba is the one who sent it to me. He said, Fundis, this is actually one of the barriers to more. Can we give him a round of applause? <laughs> Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24 to 25. It reads as following, as thus. One person gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly, but comes to poverty. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. The Bible says, give and shall be given unto you. Good measure. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall man give unto your bosom. It's not even God giving unto your bosom. It's man. And you see, one of the things I've come to realize is that in the things of the Lord, I don't have to be a blesser. I can be a blessing. You see, if I expect to reap what I have sown, it's either one, it's a loan. And where there's a loan, there's a refund. Or it's for control and manipulation. But we, we see a, 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 a person who sows is not after refunds. He's after returns. A, a blessing is someone who doesn't seek to influence, to control through their gift. Be careful who you accept gifts from. I was hearing stuff, but be careful here at the Kailami area. You, you don't know what, what is being offered to you. There's actually a price to be paid. Some people are selling. Okay. <laughs> this is what I appreciate about the harvest field. Stand up, please stand up. If I sow in Tuntando, my harvest is not limited, Tuntando. I, I don't have to go to him and say, once upon a time, no, 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 no. Sometimes you sow in Tando and reap in KG. That's the nature of the harvest field. It's universal. You can sow a seed in South Africa. And your seed will follow you to Canada. No, no, but the, but the challenge is this. We want to reap where we've sown. And the Bible doesn't say you will reap where you've sown. It says you will reap what you sow. Not where. Not where. Not where. Not where. Not where. Hey, I took care of them. And now they're not taking care of me. Some of us are living off harvest of seed we forgot about. Because even though the seeds left our pockets, they never left our lives. They went ahead of us into future times and periods. Some of you have done well without generosity. That's a reality. You are one of the, the, in fact, the reason you are rich is because you are stingy. <laughs> Have you met that type of person? 
Like, we've got those, if you need 500,000, that's the person you call. He deals with KFC, he doesn't know Tasha's, lives a nice life, amen. I don't know if I should connect to that grace or not. I don't know. But the point is this. Just because you benefited out of a violation of a principle, principle rather, does not validate the violation. In other words, if you succeeded without tithing, doesn't mean that tithing does not work. It means that there's a special blessing which you have not tapped into. Some of you have money, but the devourer is not rebuked in your life. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 32. Quickly rush to Isaiah 32. Isaiah 32. Verse 15. Isaiah 32 verse 15. Till the spirit is poured on us from on high. Now listen to this. And the desert becomes a fertile field. Now, some of us experience a measure of blessing in our lives. It's a measure of blessing. And we've not applied certain principles, such as that of generosity. And we think because, no, no, let's go. Okay, let's hold it there. Till the spirit is poured on us from on high, and the desert becomes a fertile field. And the fertile field seems like a forest. In other words, there's a measure of the blessing of the Lord, which is able to turn deserts into fertile fields. But there's another level. And that is fertile fields have the ability to become a forest. What if even the money you've made is actually not enough based on what God had in store for you? No, when you are rich. But not the way God wanted you to. So what are we going to do? We're going to give. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will also reap what? Generously. Barrier number three. I like this one. A duplicitous linguistic framework. Come on, let's say it together. <laughs> A what? Come on, come on, let's do this. This is four ways, yo. <laughs> A duplicitous linguistic framework. Bracket. The Fanaka law phenomenon. How many of us have heard of Fanaka law? Yeah, Fanaka law is mostly spoken in the mining towns or mining spaces. So it, it, it's a mixture of Zulu and English. Beautiful language. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's, it's, it is what it is, amen. But, but the point is this. There is no purity to the language. It, it, it's, the idea was to accommodate Tosas, Sutus, Malawians, various people. Let, let's meet each other somewhere. But, but what I found is that many of us have Fanaka law in our faith. That is to say, we speak faith and we speak unbelief. But when it, there needs to be a consistency in your confession. Many of us, I won't lie to you, the reason why we can't even maintain a positive confession is because it's part of our alter ego. You are the one who makes jokes for all of us. Like if we ask you, did you study? Like it's part of your, your persona. Like, like, like life must be difficult, even though you know it's not. But what you fail to understand is that you are sowing seeds. Words are seeds. 
The Bible says life and death is in the power of your tongue. Not your aunt. Your tongue. The power of your tongue. And those that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So I cannot afford to have a mixture in my confession. Are we going to be people who speak victory or speak defeat? Some of us, Bangwele, I mean, we speak ill of our spouses. Hey, God is about to turn around marriages. I, you know, you don't know who I'm married to, bro. <laughs> like, if you only knew, you'd change your confession. No, 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 no. We don't speak what we see. We speak what we want to see. There is no room for finding a law in the things of God. Many of us are producing things that are mixed. But what is God looking for? He's looking for a pure harvest. Let's quickly go to the book of James. James chapter 3. Verse 2. We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect. Able to keep their whole body in check. So you don't keep your whole body in check by keeping your body in check. You keep your body in check by keeping your tongue in check. Verse 3, when we put bits into the mouth of horses to, mo to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Now, mind you, the idea here is that the horse is literally your life. Or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilots want to go. The, 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 the horse speaks of your own life. But the, 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 the ship speaks of the lives of other people. In other words, your negative confession doesn't just affect you. It has the potential to affect other people. Let's talk ships now. Let's talk ships. What happened with, with, with Jonah was when he was in the ship? The other people's lives were endangered. Not because they had done anything wrong. But because of one man who was out of position. Some of you, you might not see the effects of what you speak. But your words might carry generational implications. No, your child. Things never go well for me. Oh, wow. Keep writing. The Bible says, my, pa, my tongue is the pen of a ready writer. In other words, I have the ability to write my future with my words. God didn't think the world into existence, He spoke it. Words matter. You can't be a fanaka law type Christian. Have a consistency of confession. If you have nothing good to say, just you. The last barrier. A suspensive approach. Somebody say suspensive. John chapter 4. Shigo, you can come up. Thank you so much, my brother. John chapter 4. We'll start reading from verse 34. And it reads this, thus. My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. My food, let's go back, is, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. The next verse. Don't you ever say, it's still four months until harvest. I tell you, open your eyes 
And look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Don't you have a saying? Don't you have a saying that God is about to? Don't you have a saying that God is about to release the blessing? Don't you have a saying that God is about to pour out a blessing that you won't have room for it? But, but now Jesus says, actually, that's not how it works. Lift up your eyes. Open up your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. In other words, what, what God actually, the, the, the place in which is functioning is not in the future. It's in the now. A time is coming and now is. In other words, there's a choice. Are you going to be a person who says a time is coming for the breakthrough? Or are you going to say now is the time for breakthrough? Are you going to be a person who is saying in the next few months I'm going to see God do this and that? Or are you going to say now I'm going to tap into it? Now I'm blessed in the city and blessed in the country. Now I'm seeing God elevate me. I refuse to suspend the blessings of God. I refuse to suspend my obedience to what God has said. Hey, 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 the harvest is not about to come. We are in the harvest. We are not praying for a revival. We are in a revival. We are not waiting to see a future manifestation of the promise of God. The manifestation is now. The Bible says he came to his own and his own received him not. But as many as received him, he gave the power to become sons of God. Can you believe there are still people who are waiting for the first coming of Jesus Christ? We are waiting for the second. Why? Because they have a suspensive approach in their transaction with God. Not about to. Done. The reason why the Bible calls the, 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 what we believe in the gospel, which means the good news, is because it's meant to report what has already happened. So my more is not somewhere in the future. Now, open your eyes. Come on, come on, come on. What you are complaining about, there are people who are praying for it. Uh, what you are complaining about, there is someone in 1976 who said, God, if only I can go into a place where I can interact with other races. If only I could have equal opportunity. What you are now, 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 open your eyes now. Open up and see the field. Open up and see the opportunity. What if that opportunity that you've been trusting God for is already in the now? What if you are in a season, the greatest season of your life? And you're saying it's coming but Jesus says open your eyes look at the field you know what I've seen Jesus says the harvest is ripe now the, the way we move so slow the harvest becomes rotten it, it can't be ripe forever it was Leonard Ravenhill who said, an opportunity of a lifetime must be seized within the lifetime of the opportunity. Open your eyes now. Look at the fields. The harvest is ripe. The harvest is ripe for your blessing. The harvest is ripe for your healing. The harvest is ripe for your deliverance. The harvest is ripe for your restoration. When men shall say, there's a casting down, you shall say, there's a lifting up. A thousand may fall on your side, ten thousand in your right hand side, but it will come near you. Open your eyes and see your healing. Open your eyes and see your blessing. Open your eyes and see your deliverance. Open your eyes and see your harvest. This is the move we've waited for. This is clouds we've cried out for we have heard of your fame we stand in our duties renew them in our day make them known in our time it's the now I'm reminded of a story a man told the story about a man who was taken to heaven and when he was taken to heaven he began to see various biblical characters. He sees this Rudy character. He runs to him and says, You must be David. And he says, Yes, I am. 
And the man began to ask, how was it when you killed David with the sling? Or when you killed Goliath rather? And as David was about to answer, he sees Samson. He runs to Samson and says, Samson, you, might be, you must be Samson. And, and Samson says, yes. And then, and then Sam, he asks Samson, says, Samson, how did it feel like to kill a thousand Philistines with a donkey jawbone? And just as Samson was about to answer, he sees another figure there. Something told him, this must be Abraham. He went to Abraham and said, Abraham, how did it feel like to be known as the father of many nations? The father of our faith. And just as he was about to answer, he sees Samson and he asks him, how did it feel to have so many wives? And just as Samson was about to answer, a man runs to him and asks him the question, how was it when God poured out his spirit on all flesh? When old men could dream dreams and young men could see visions, and it was at that moment where he realized that this was the prophet Joel. First Peter chapter 1 says, The angels, they desire to look into these things. Things which are your reality. Can we stand up on our feet? Come and begin to lay hold of God's blessing. Begin to lay hold of God's blessing. We are not suspending anything. We refuse to have a suspensive cloth in this covenant. Come on, begin to open up your mouth and call it out. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Begin to open up. Come on, EGC. Come on, come on. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, we thank you that there will be no suspension. We are not suspending. We are not suspending. We are not suspending. We are not suspending. Are not suspending. Right now, we are stepping into the blessing. Right now, we're stepping into your favor, oh God. Right now! Right now! Hey! Thank you, Jesus! We're stepping into it now! Oh! Glory! 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 Oh! Come on, say, we are ready!
Come on, make it the cry of your heart. Say, pour up yourself. While we're still on our feet, can you please have no movement? Can you please make sure there's no movement during this very sacred time? During this sacred time. I want to say this, I want to say this. We have spoken against the spirit of suspending in terms of how we approach God. Some of you are in this place here. Who have said one day I will give my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. But what if I said to you that there's not a better day. We know not of a better day for you. To accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. It could be that you put an age to it. But how do you know? If you'll still be alive when that day comes. Today we are making a cry. We are making a cry. We are calling you. To meet with this Jesus who died for you. The Bible says there is one mediator between God and man. The man Christ Jesus. So if you are in this place, every eye is closed, every eye is closed. If you are in this place, say, Pastor Marty, I've never accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Today I want to accept this Jesus. Quickly raise up your hand. Those who need to accept Jesus Christ, quickly raise up that hand. Quickly raise up that hand. You are in this place. You are in this place. You've never accepted Jesus. This is a perfect moment for you. To accept this Jesus that we're speaking of. Come on, come on. You don't have to worry about who's watching. Just quickly raise up that hand. I want to pray with you. I says there's someone in this place. There's someone. There's someone who needs to accept this Jesus. Just quickly raise up that hand. Quickly raise up that hand. Oh, oh. Are we seeing a hand? There's a hand. Can the person who has raised their hand come to the front? Let's clap hands as they come through.
You are too afraid to come to the front. But how will you miss out on such a great salvation? Come on, come on, don't stay back, don't stay back. This is the greatest call that will ever be made to anyone. Is there anyone? Is there one more person who says, Pastor, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it's the power of God. Is there anyone who wants to accept this Jesus? Just quickly raise up that hand. Before we close this time, raise up your hand. Can we thank God for this young man? Can we thank God for this young man? Come on, did you see? Let's celebrate the Lord! Oh, come on, come on, champ. Let's give it up. Let's give it up one more time. Let's help him as he says this prayer. Say, Jesus, today I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Today, I'm a child of God. My sins are washed away. I'm a new creation. All things have passed away. And all things have become new. So right now, I declare... That I'm a new creation in the name of Jesus. Come on, can somebody shout hallelujah? Just bring him in. Father God, we pray for this young man, destined and purposed of you, O oh God. Father, may you fill him up with your spirit. May you keep him in your love, O oh God, in the path of discipleship. So right now, God, we bring him to you. This is your child. This is your child, O oh God. So, Father, we dedicate him to you and we pray that you may keep him in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. You can follow up the, the this way. Come on, praise. Come on, let's appreciate him one more time. Yesterday, while I was busy just in prayer, preparing for today's session, there were two people that the Lord showed me. Uh, I won't ask anyone to come to the front. I think this probably, it requires a bit of discretion. There's someone who's been struggling with sores. Sores around your back. Sores all over your back. And the Lord is healing that. Can we just begin to pray into that? Father, in the name of Jesus, we command those sores to leave right now. By the stripes of Jesus, they are made whole. By the stripes of Jesus, they are made whole. By the stripes of Jesus, they are made whole. We speak the healing of the Lord. We speak the healing of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. The second person I saw was just a very difficult menstrual cycle. It's, it's as if, it's, it's like that whole thing of women with the issue of blood. And we just want to pray into that. Pray into that. We're going to just pray into that and declare the healing of the Lord. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we speak healing. We release healing into this place, oh God. That person who's struggling, oh God, with their cycle. Father God, we pray, oh God, against constant bleeding, oh God. We are decreeing and declaring that healing, perfect healing, is their portion. So Father, we thank you for complete healing. We give you praise and honor in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Let's give Jesus a shout of praise.